Let's talk about Cadena and the team and type of people that the Cadena blockchain is going to attract and already has attracted. And I want to point out the simple fact that taking a look at Ethereum, Ethereum was created by Vitalik, will go down in history as one of the prodigies of the industry. Way ahead of his time, I believe he wrote the Ethereum white paper at the age of 14. When you think about creating a blockchain that needs to be designed for institutional investors, legacy players, that needs to be able to meet the demands of banking, institutions, finance, the stock exchange, governments, retail investors, businesses, engineers, entrepreneurs, no matter how prodigy boy smart you are, you only have so much life experience and that life experience is what you created. Ethereum was designed with the mentality of somebody that was 14 and extremely smart. Taking a look at the Cadena blockchain, I'm going to play this interview with Stuart Popejoy and Stuart Habert. Stuart Habert is the number one cited author in the Bitcoin white paper. Satoshi took more inspiration from Scott Stranata and Stuart Habert than anybody else in the world. Since then, Stuart Habert has only been involved with a few projects, one of which being Cadena. Why was Stuart Habert, the number one cited author in the Bitcoin white paper, attracted to Cadena? Why is Cadena evolving and going to attract some of the greatest minds in the business? So in this, I want you to listen to what Stuart says. Stuart worked at JP Morgan Chase. So when Jamie Dimon, the CEO and founder of JP Morgan Chase, wanted to build Juno, JP Morgan Chase's first blockchain, what did he do? He said, no, you know what? We need to bring the smartest minds in the world all into one room and you guys need to interview them. So Stuart and Will got to interview all of the smartest minds in the industry. They got to analyze everything about their blockchain. They got to hear what failed, what worked, what didn't work. So they were able to skillfully craft and design Cadena with the mindset and mentality and understanding of where every other project had failed in this industry. So when they set out to build Cadena, they knew what limitations were there. Stuart Popejoy knew what limitations were in the finance industry. Will Martino knew what limitations were in the government, the SEC, the stock exchange, right? Stuart has 15 years of experience building some of the most advanced algorithmic trading applications for enterprise grade clients. And this is one thing that I think that the industry is totally missing. It's going right over their head. You're talking about a blockchain that's attracting the smartest minds in the world. And all of those minds are coming together because what this technology is going to do is it's going to revolutionize the world. People didn't understand the internet. It took people 10 years to actually understand what Bitcoin was. It's going to take people 20 years to understand what potential something like Cadena has. So I'm doing my very, very best to help the world understand what potential something like Cadena has because it's going to revolutionize the world. This isn't me being a moon boy shilling you some random project. This is me saying, hey, pay attention because it's very rare in life when you can actually pinpoint a technology revolution and have the ability to get into it at the ground level. Cadena will be the internet of crypto. It will be the Amazon of crypto. It will be the Facebook of crypto, except for the fact that it aligns incentives. So people in the healthcare industry are incentivized to work with people in the government. The government's incentivized to work with entrepreneurs, right? Because it adds value and everybody can collaborate on a global scale, unlike anything the world has ever seen. Ready? Let's dive deep. Yeah, and you know, this is something when we are, when Will and I were at JP Morgan, um, you know, we are advising on strategic investments as well as, uh, you know, researching and building blockchain systems, which meant we, in 2015, we met pretty much everybody in blockchain um, at the time, you know, Vitalik came in, uh, you know, pretty much every project that was going on was something. So uh, we were, we had a fairly luxurious position from from which we launched Cadena in terms of being able to consider a lot of different design approaches. Um, and that's why I bring up Pact because, you know, we had studied Ethereum very carefully and we had, uh, Pact uh, is our smart contract language and, and you know, and, and we developed it in the first years of our founding. You know, and one of the things was in looking around was trying to find something to base it off of and not really finding anything that we felt was safe enough and gave the right combination of make it easy to do the kind of things you want to do on a blockchain, but restrict the developer in kind of principal ways so that they can't shoot themselves in the foot and you know have the kinds of exploits that's, that we're now seeing occurring almost every day. Let me call out that word um, principled. I'm not a programming languages guy at all, but when I um, first heard about what, what Cadena was doing with Pact, I was enormously attracted by uh, Stewart's and Will's principled approach to designing the language. 
We just heard Stuart say exactly how and why Pact was created. Right there, we just saw Stuart explain exactly why Cadena was created the way that it was. After analyzing and seeing where every other blockchain hit limitations where they failed, what was the main breaking point? What was the number one limitation to these other blockchains? And it all boils back to the coding language. How do we scale a blockchain with a coding language that just isn't really designed to do the complicated mathematical equations in a transparent in a transparent way in human readable code because it's one thing to scale a blockchain and say that it can scale but unless i can actually read that and prove that it can scale when you're compiling and compressing all this data and you're putting it onto a chain but it's not in human readable code i think that's one of the biggest setbacks so when you talk about the design architecture you're going to see why cadena is attracting people like Stuart Habert. but i'm going to let him explain it to you we were we had a fairly luxurious position from from which we launched Cadena in terms of being able to consider a lot of different design approaches. You know, and the idea there was that there was a lot of really great stuff that Bitcoin had introduced. I mean, the idea, just the idea of it not being Turing complete and the idea being that that Turing completeness as it exists in something like Ethereum, you don't really get the benefits of it because it's a gas metered environment anyway. So it'll be operationally Turing incomplete, but you get all the risks of a Turing complete. For free. That kind right. of thing. you don't even have to pay for the rest. Right. right. And, you know, and, and, and this isn't to trash Ethereum. I mean, you know, as I, like you were saying, the, the use of RipeMD, there's a lots of things in Bitcoin that, you know, in hindsight, we can criticize. And there's lots of things in Ethereum that in hindsight, we can criticize. And certainly they are experiencing a lot of challenges based on some of those, you know, uh, criticizable design decisions. But, you know, you can't. Likewise with Ethereum, you can't take from Ethereum the fact that they, you know, since Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin had arguably a, a not secure enough scripting system to make the core developers feel comfortable with letting it run unrestrictedly. Ethereum obviously went much further with that. And while, you know, certainly it's hard to write secure smart contracts in Ethereum, the one thing that smart contracts don't do in Ethereum is crash Ethereum, you know, so it depends on how you define safety. Smart contracts in Ethereum are 100% safe in the sense that they will never introduce some kind of like buffer overflow or, you know, there's no kind of like Bobby Tables kind of, you know, SQL <laughs> injection or any of that stuff right. in uh, the very tightly specified EVM as designed by Gavin Wood. So like it's, uh, you know, so like they got it right. They obviously got more right than they got wrong. And they're in that position where they get, you know, lots of slings and arrows because they're, they're the leaders and they're the ones we focus on. And we learned, you know, one of our original prototypes uh, was going to be an EVM based system. And it, it just was something that we, so PACT really went back to Bitcoin, uh, tried to, you know, solve some of the problems in the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin setup, because it really has to do with how the bytecode is executed that can make it unsafe. And then just try to like go from there and, and similarly try to do something minimal in the sense of we built, we based it on Lisp. We knew we wanted it to be interpreted because that's talk about, thing. talk about basing, uh, basing it on something that's been around for a while. Yes. Uh, Lisp. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And let's that's, go, how, let's go back to the, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the fifties, the, uh, IBM, I forget which IBM it was, but you know, the IBM machine running a Lisp interpreter. An interpret a fully interpreted language in the 50s and not running machine code but actually recognizing strings of you know lisp uh, expressions and executing them and that indeed is important to pack because the idea again when people see Bit, uh, bitcoin as a bytecode they think oh that's machine language you can't read it that's not true it's actually very easy to read bitcoin script you know you got to print the names of the opcodes you can't just read the binary but once you turn it into its kind of equivalent assembly those scripts are very easy to read and that was a that was the guiding light for pact as well you know it should be the kind of thing that like you can show to your lawyer you can show to your you know your your board and that right? code and that code is actually written to the blockchain right and that's for and on bitcoin and as well as in pact and and that's why one of the reasons why it's a lisp is that if you look at the structure of lisp it actually shows you the exact you know kind of hierarchical form uh, formulations that make code so there's no kind of magic happening between the code and what's on the blockchains human readable on the blockchain turing incomplete 
And then from there, it's just about trying to make it uh, easy, trying to make it as uh, kind of straightforward and simple as possible, which, you know, with smart contracts isn't all that easy. Just like it took the world 10 years to really start to understand what Bitcoin was, we needed people like Michael Saylor to start stepping in and helping explain these things on an intellectual level so that the rest of the world can really go, oh, I see now, right? No matter how many videos I make, I'll never be able to explain what Kadena is going to be capable of because you can't fit it into one video. It takes years of just studying and researching to really wrap your head around. Over the last six months, I've spent over a thousand hours researching Kadena. I'm working on consuming every piece of content ever created on Kadena that's ever been published online. Every time I watch one more video, I just feel like I get more and more bullish on the technology. And a lot of this started with me going, wow, I went really heavy into this technology. And a lot of that started because I thought that I may have made a bad investment. I thought maybe I went too big. Maybe I'm going too bullish. Maybe I have blinders on and I'm overlooking something. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't overlooking any key piece of information. I was basically trying to fact check myself. Sometimes when you can't prove that you're right, you can start trying to prove why you're not wrong. So I just started to look at the Kadena blockchain and was like, okay, maybe it's inflation. Maybe it's tokenomics. Maybe it's team. Maybe it's the coding language. Maybe it's the design architecture of their blockchain. Maybe it's pre-mine. Maybe it's VCs. Maybe it's all of the things. And I just went through them one by one by one. It was like, wow, they nailed that one. Oh my gosh, they nailed tokenomics. Oh my gosh, they nailed the emission rates. Oh my gosh, their team is unbelievable. Oh my gosh, the design architecture is revolutionary. Well, wait, somebody's gonna copy that technology. Oh my gosh, they have a patent on it. Oh my gosh, Will Martino, Stuart Popejoy, Stuart Haber, it's like mind blowing, right? So this is why I'm just trying to help educate you guys and show you guys what I'm seeing. Whether you guys choose to believe in the technology or not, or you think that something else is superior, I suggest that you try to put in the same amount of research studying something like Solana or CKB and going through and trying to say, hey, can you make videos like I'm making? Can you talk about CKB? Can you talk about AVEX? Can you talk about any other blockchain the way you hear me talking about Kadena? And if you can, then heck yeah, you're, you're making the right investment. If you can't, then you really need to start analyzing what blockchain are you invested in and then comparing it to the technology that Kadena has created. Every one of these blockchains has known from day one, for the most part, what their limitations were going to be. And it's just been like this vicious cycle in the industry of like, okay, hey, well, what if we do this? What if we do that? Well, here's what we really want to do. But in order to do it that way, we'd have to spend five years recreating a coding language that does specifically what we want it to do. Kadena saw that. So Kadena knew from the very beginning that they had to sacrifice three years just to write a coding language. And I'm sure they thought it would never take that long. But now we're on pack B4 and it's changed so much and it's gotten so much better, more secure, safer, easier to do things like multi-sig using KPIs. Kadena's blockchain creates APIs every time you write a smart contract. I think I'm saying that right, but don't quote me on it. There's so much I'm still learning about it. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by the channel. Hopefully you guys found this content helpful. If you guys could do me a favor and hit that like, hit that subscribe button, swing over to the Kadena's YouTube channel, swing over to the Kadena's Twitter page. Sir Lens a lot, Stuart Habert, all their links will be down in the description. Show them some love. I appreciate you guys. Peace.